In the How Far Away Is It? video book chapter on nearby stars, we covered the 1830s race to see who could find the first real stellar parallax. The astronomer Frederick Bessel won. He mapped the star 61 Cygni against a distant star background for 28 years, observing the star's ellipses that followed the Earth's orbit. In 1838, after thousands of measurements and calculations, he made scientific history by announcing that the parallax of 61 Cygni was 0 0.314 arc seconds. That gives us a distance of 98 trillion kilometers, or 61 trillion miles. That's over 600,000 times further from the Sun than we are. That's too far to be reflecting the Sun's light. This is how, in the middle of the 19th century, we discovered that stars burned with their own light. 175 years later, Gaia, a European Space Agency mission, started making precise parallax distance measurements. This view shows the density of stars observed by Gaia in each portion of the sky. Brighter regions indicate denser star concentrations, while darker regions correspond to patches of the sky where fewer stars are observed. In the process of scanning the stars in our own galaxy, Gaia also spotted other objects, from asteroids in our solar system to quasars outside the Milky Way. It also found three stellar mass black holes, including one less than 2,000 light years from Earth. They were discovered by studying ultra-precise measurements of stellar positions and motions. A wobble in the movement of stars on the sky indicated that they are orbiting a very massive object. The objects are approximately 10 times more massive than our Sun. Gaia's second black hole, BH2, is located 3,800 light years away from Earth. It's a binary system consisting of a red giant star and a black hole. In this animation of Gaia BH2, the orbits are accurately sized, but the black hole's diameter is not to scale. Here's a Milky Way map built with Gaia's data. You can see the central bar and the detailed structure of spiral arms. Here's what it looks like edge on. You can see the central bulge and the warped disk. Gaia's detailed star locations show that the disk wobbles. A new study revealed that the influence of the orbiting dwarf galaxy Sagittarius may be partly responsible for the wobble. It is known from existing models that Sagittarius fell into the Milky Way three times, first about five or six billion years ago, then about two billion years ago, and finally one billion years ago. Gaia also found three periods of increased star formation in our galaxy that peaked around the same times that Sagittarius is believed to have passed through the disk. This would have caused previously still gas and dust inside the Milky Way to slosh around like ripples on water. In some areas, these ripples would lead to higher concentrations of dust and gas, triggering the formation of new stars. It's possible that Sagittarius's first pass may have started the formation of the Sun and our Earth. After 3,827 days of amazing science operations, Gaia ran out of fuel. It could no longer maintain its position at the L2 Lagrange point. Its science observations were complete. Its last targeted observation, on January 10, 2025, was of binary pair 61 Cygni. This is Gaia's final view. The brightest component, 61 Cygni A, is seen north of its companion, 61 Cygni B. A few background stars are visible as well. Frederick Bessel would be pleased. Over the past decade, Gaia has made more than three trillion observations. It has pinned down the brightness and position on the sky of two billion stars. It has also cataloged the parallax, proper motion, and color for 1.3 billion stars. And it has accurate distance information on 96 million stars. All in all, it has accumulated 500 terabytes of data that is transforming our understanding of our galaxy. On March 27, 2025, Gaia went into its final orbit around the Sun, far away from Earth's sphere of influence. It was passivated to avoid any harm or interference with other spacecraft. 
The term passivation refers to the process of removing stored energy from a space vehicle in order to reduce the risk of explosions that would produce dangerous debris. Gaia is gone, but the hundreds of thousands of bytes of data collected and released in its data release 4 will keep astronomers busy for decades to come.